<clears throat> We're doing it live on a Friday. Let's get this thing going, everybody. Talking Denver Broncos, Mile High City React. Andrew Mason on assignment today. Cecil Amy going to do a Friday brain dump. Welcome into the program. Because we have to talk about whether or not this Michael Panics Jr. interest is a smokescreen or nah, brah. That's right. I have my opinion. I have my information. And it'll be curious to see if my information holds up as the draft gets here a month from today, the NFL draft, a uh, month from yesterday, sorry. I'm like, what day is it? A uh, month from yesterday, the NFL draft begins. Will the Broncos move up for J.J. McCarthy or Drake May? Will they stay put at 12 for Bo Nix? Will they move back and get Michael Penix Jr.? Now, the reports coming out about Michael Penix after his pro day, the Broncos will have a second formal interview, essentially, with Michael Penix. They had one at the scouting combine earlier this year. And so it's interesting to note that after his pro day, they're working him out. And they're not, or we have yet to have the information about Drake May. I'll, I'll dig on that a little bit. It was running around the Mile High City today. So um, we'll see what happens there. But we know the interest in Michael Penix is there publicly. But what about privately? Is this a smokescreen or is this legitimate interest in a player that you could get likely in the 20s or in the 30s? Don't think it falls much beyond that. Um, just from a tool standpoint, Michael Penix Jr. might be the best pure passer in this entire draft class. Like, and that includes Caleb Williams, the generational talent that is Caleb Williams. And yeah, I mean, I don't get too bent out of shape about the, you know, Caleb Williams, where's fingernail polish or whatever. Like, I don't really care. Uh, the kid can sling it. I'm worried more about his dad and the team around him, the marketing team, the branding. Like, that's what I think could throw off Caleb Williams. Jaden Daniels, my number one quarterback. Well, Michael Penix Jr. Uh, there as well. I believe I have him sixth, right? If I go down the list, Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams, Drake May, Bo Nix, J.J. McCarthy, Michael Penix Jr. There he is, number six, and a player that I saw down at the Senior Bowl. But the Broncos um, going back and visiting with Penix again. This is very interesting. Now, is it a smoke screen or is it real? I'm going to tell you right off at the top. I think it's a smoke screen. I really do. Now, there is a handful of other teams. Andrew Mason wrote about this at denversports.com. Uh, and what's interesting to note, I'll go over the other teams that are going to work out Penix there as well. It's like, okay, another visit with Penix. But that also means other teams are going to visit with him as well. Those teams include the New York Giants which is interesting for reasons I'll get to in here in a little bit, the Atlanta Falcons, the Las Vegas Raiders, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. So the uh, four teams that will meet, besides the Denver Broncos, the Giants, which is interesting. His former strength coach at Indiana works for the Giants right now. So there's that connection. But we also know that Michael Penix had some work ethic concerns uh, had those injuries at Indiana. He was just snake bit, couldn't stay healthy. Um, I did ask Michael Penix at the combine about his work ethic. He answered, and it was a very good answer. So I have him on the record speaking about his work ethic, but this is what teams are digging into. The Giants with his former strength coach, that's interesting because the Giants are sitting there ahead of the Denver Broncos and the Atlanta Falcons are looking at Kirk Cousins and then you know what's after Kirk Cousins that could be Michael Penix Jr. Again, he could flat out sling it. The Raiders sitting behind the Broncos are a team that could be looking for, you know, that sort of potential franchise quarterback. There is no doubt that Michael Penix has that physical skill. As Scott McLuhan has told me years ago, physical stuff is easy to see. Former GM and now works for Jacksonville. I told Scott at the Wyoming Pro Day, I was like, can you let the Broncos get some Wyoming guys, please? For the love of God, Jacksonville's got them all. Andrew Wingard, Chad Muma. They don't have Logan Wilson, but I digress. And then the Pittsburgh Steelers, who have Justin Fields, who have Russell Wilson. And so getting Michael Penix would make a very cramped room. 
But who even knows if Russell Wilson makes the team? Anyway, I want to talk about Penix and the Broncos' interest specifically. Is this real interest? Is this interest that, um, you know, we can kind of take to the bank? Again, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Could totally be wrong. Penix could be their favorite guy. But just kind of from my gathering of things, is I don't believe that to be the case. I believe it to be doing due diligence. That's the best way to look at the situation with Michael Penix Jr. is you're doing your due diligence. You're making sure to dot the I's and cross the T's for everybody. And that includes Penix. So when you're the Broncos and you could spend quite a bit of draft capital to move up for J.J. McCarthy. Again, I think Minnesota's going after Drake May. I think Denver's going after J.J. McCarthy. Again, totally could be wrong. We're at March 29th, and this is just what I believe right now. I could believe something else if I hear some more information, as I will be continuing to dig and, and talk to people after the owners' meetings and uh, this is my first year at the owners meetings. It was fantastic. Um, usually for me, it was after the combine. I like to check and double check with people with various teams, people that work for teams that well, you know I'm friendly with, um, and then try to find out as I assemble my one and only mock draft. I try to you know nail as many of those picks as possible and try to get a feel for what teams like, who they like, you know, kind of the latest draft buzz. You do hear during the month of April or the month of lies. The month of lies might have started early. Is this part of the month of lies? Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. Now, you have to be ready. You know, I, I say it's a smoke screen, but that's not entirely accurate as well. It's not interest, like interest at 12. No, you're not going to take Michael Penix at 12. Uh, if the Raiders take him behind Denver, uh, good for them. But basically, because of his injury history, Michael Penix Jr. should be drafted in the 30s. That doesn't mean he can't play. That doesn't mean he's the best of them all. Again, he can flat out sling it. Physical, easy to see. Flat out sling it. Under pressure, Michigan created a lot of questions for this kid because entering that game against the Michigan Wolverines, I was on the fan saying he could have top 10 status because, again, physical stuff's easy to see. It's it's one of the, I don't want to say annoying but it's one of the things that kind of grinds my gears when I hear from fans, but his arm, like, yes, I, I know. Uh-huh. Yes. He's got accurate. Yes, of course. It's much more than that. The quarterback position. It's much more than he's got a big arm and he can sling it. I mean, the kid can, and it's pretty when it leaves his hand, it's ugly <laughs> before it leaves his hand, that left-handed sidearm thing. You're not going to change his release whatsoever. He does wind it up a little bit. You're worried about tighter spaces, cramped spaces. You're worried about him under pressure as well. Again, the best quarterback uh, in this draft class under pressure is Bo Nix. And Bo Nix does not have the cannon or the hose that Michael Penix does in terms of just being able to get it there, get it there in a hurry, get it there, and it looks good with uh, plenty of touch, plenty of zip there as well. He can throw both the fastball and the changeup. There's my baseball reference for Andrew Mason again, who is on assignment today. So the Broncos are working out Michael Penix Jr. again. What does that mean? I think it's due diligence. And I also think that if they cannot move up to four and four is the target, three is available. Three means you're giving up Pat Sertan. Four is available. And I do not believe, again, could totally be wrong. Don't at me, bro. If you move up to four, I don't believe it requires Sertan. It's just based on some conversations. Let's, uh, you know, say that's kind of the way it's trending. And Mason and I have both told you the Denver Broncos do not want to trade Pat Sertan whatsoever. Not at all. So let's say you can't move up to four. The three price is too rich for you. You stay put at 12. Oh, man, Bo Nix goes before you. Because, again, it is not too high to take Bo Nix at 12 or even within the top 10. He's been a first rounder for two years. He still grades out as a first rounder. And again, very good under pressure, very good under duress and attacking the field uh, in that uh, 8.9, almost nine yards per attempt under duress. That's outstanding compared to the 3.9 for Caleb Williams, much below the threshold or where they need to be. Penix is right there at the threshold. Drake Mays right there at the threshold. Mays a little wild. Penix is a little more controlled. But again, that Michigan game brought up a lot of question marks with this kid. A ton of question marks. So we're left to wonder, what are the Broncos doing? Here's exactly what they're doing. They're doing their due diligence, but also they're being ready to move in case Nix is off the ball. Oh my God, they didn't even get Bo Nix. 
Now, bail out of 12, bail out of 12, move back. And I don't know exactly who would fall. For Knicks to be a top 12 pick, um, someone would have to fall. Brock Bowers, whoever, name a player. Roman Dunze, which I don't think he will. But like somebody major is going to have to fall in order for the Broncos to bail from 12 and to miss out on a guy like Nick. So anyway, let's say we've got those five quarterbacks. Oh my God, five in the top 10. And this is incredible. Broncos bail. They move back. That's where Michael Penix comes into play. So you don't want to be sitting on your laurels or sitting on your hands, resting on your laurels and sitting on your hands. If you're the Broncos and all of a sudden it's like, Oh my God, we didn't even get Bo Nix. We got a bail. Because you're not taking Penix Jr. at 12. Uh, physically, his skill set is there. Health-wise, I don't care if he got an excellent bill of health at the Combine. That's good, but that's also like, why did we learn that? Most of the time, we don't see health reports. Remember Carson Strong when he came out of Nevada? I remember him at the Senior Bowl. Big arm. Absolute statue. Even Dan Marino is more mobile than this guy. But Carson Strong, amazing physical talent in terms of arm strength. What did he fall undrafted, right? Seventh round undrafted, whatever it was. Somebody, some Nevada fan in the chat room, let me know. But it's like, oh, okay, you just have to be ready. You have to be ready in case something changes, something, there's some movement. And all of a sudden, you know, you're left with like, okay, Michael Penix, but not Penix at 12. And maybe some people say not Bo Nix at 12. I disagree with that. Um, but that's fine. That's what this time of year is all about. Uh, so, you know, if you've done your due diligence on Michael Penix, then you're going to know that you're comfortable moving back, collecting certain picks, and it's Penix, and oh my God, we missed out on Penix too. Well, then it's Michael Pratt in the second round, or the third round, excuse me. But maybe by moving back, they would have assembled a second round pick. So you give yourself options. This is wise for the Broncos to do just that, and to have everyone put their eyes on Michael Penix. Uh, Sean Payton gets the final call. Obviously, it's Penix, uh, it's Payton's opinion on Penix, a lot of peas popping uh, is more important than George Payton's opinion. George Payton's opinion carries weight, but Sean Payton's opinion carries more weight. So it's what does he think about Michael Penix, who would stay on time, would stay on target, has an absolute cannon to howitzer. Um, who was it that said it's a it's a great time of year for howitzers, like a big howitzer year uh, around March and April. Yes, he's got the cannon. He's got the rocket. He can get it there. Can he stay healthy? And what about under pressure? Because in the NFL, it's all about pressure, right? The pressure of the NFL is all that you deal with. That's all that league is about. And Michael Penix against a pro defense didn't look real good. Sorry. And again, college football fans, y'all are crazy. Like, please stop. If you went to Washington, uh, awesome, I guess. Uh, my son went to Washington State, graduated. Go Cougs. But like Washington... I don't know. Does Washington hate Washington state? Like Oregon hates Oregon state. Anyway, I'm familiar with Northwest colleges because uh, my kids go up in the Northwest to college. So anyway, like I saw every game at Washington and he's the greatest. That's fine, but that's not the pros. Okay. I saw Bo Nix at Oregon. I watched every game and he's the greatest. I saw JJ McCarthy at Michigan and he's the greatest. I'm sorry, but most college games don't give you much to evaluate for pro concepts. That's why pro days, private workouts, these things all matter. And again, it's one of the reasons why I ask Sean Payton about like, okay, what can you learn from a pro day? How does he interact with his teammates? How is he, you know, picking things up? You're going to give him a lot of homework. How does he do with that homework? Is it good? Is it poor? Sean Payton talked about a breaking point. Where is the breaking point for this quarterback? Can you break him? mentally sometimes guys don't break and they can accept all your homework Penix is a very bright kid I say kid um everybody's younger than me it seems like but like he's a very bright young man uh so you know football intelligence that's not a problem uh you know they need to dig into the uh, off field like work ethic type of concerns if they've done their due diligence there then they'll know more about that um and again Penix did ask or excuse me answer my question about his work ethic at the scouting combine. So we have that on record. Um, I believe that Michael Penix is lower on the Broncos board than some would think. They do have interest. They're doing their due diligence. That's what they should do. But just based on, let's call it a hunch, 
And if you want to call that a lassie bark, then so be it. But let's call it a hunch that they are doing their due diligence, but you know, he's not the highest on their board. I don't think that's outrageous to say. I'm not stretching anything uh, by any any sorts of the imagination. So Penix is lower on their board than other quarterbacks, perhaps even Bo Nix. Bo Nix is a better fit than Michael Penix, in my opinion. Um, and he doesn't come with those type of concerns about, can he even stay healthy? I know he stayed healthy at Washington. I'm happy for him. I'm glad that he got a clean bill of health. Excellent health results at the combine, but you're still talking about two knee injuries, two shoulder injuries. That's bad news. And guys that get hurt in college, guess what? They tend to get hurt in the pros as well. And the Michigan game, it's the last time we saw him play football. I know he played in the senior bowl and Penix was okay at the senior bowl, but he wasn't dazzling. Like I, I and again, the senior bowl isn't everything. So, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and preach and be like, I've been there 18 years in a row and it's the most important thing. No, it's part of the process. But in a part of the process at the Senior Bowl, Penix was all right. He was okay. Nix was okay. Um, Spencer Rattler was okay. Please don't. People went overboard with Spencer Rattler at the Senior Bowl. Like, that's just not the truth. Seek the truth and speak the truth. Truth of the matter is, none of these guys look real special. I've seen Justin Herbert at that game. That was special, right? I I've seen that type of quarterback at the senior bowl before saw Josh Allen at the senior bowl. That was special, right? And he got much better as the week went on advanced with great strides as the week went on there in mobile, Alabama. Penix didn't do that. And as I've said multiple times, I sat next to him at media night. I guess I was kind of leaning on the table, um, but he was sitting down. I was leaning on the table. I'm right next to him, like right there. No people in between me and Michael Penix. And I look at his lower body and I look at my lower body and I'm like, he's skinnier than I am. And I'm skinny. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, it's a concern I had for Teddy Bridgewater. That concern became real. It's a concern I had for Deshaun Watson. We'll see about that, um, you know, as he goes through his thing. But like, yeah, it's a concern. You have that lower body that's pretty much a twig. Like, you, that's, that's a concern. For me, um, that is the largest concern. Uh, teams are going to find out as much as they possibly can. And again, the Giants looking into him with his former strength coach at Indiana is curious. That's a curious move. But again, the Giants aren't going to take him in the top 10. The Giants are thinking about moving back. The Steelers, maybe, that's kind of weird again. The Raiders possibly could at 13, maybe. That's what they do. But maybe they move back. So the interest in Penix is there from a small handful of teams. The Broncos are among those teams because they're doing all the work. They will leave no stone unturned when it comes to finding out as much as they possibly can about these quarterbacks. And I applaud that, man. So Drake May, Michael Penix, of course, Jaden Daniels had these pro days this week, the J.J. McCarthy pro day last week, Sean Payton admitting that they had a five, six hour workout, whatever it was with J.J. McCarthy. And it's uh, led to some more conversations, some more conversations about this quarterback position. But I want to bring in, uh, a tweet from former NFL quarterback, I believe he was fourth rounder out of Virginia, Kurt Ben Kurt, who has um, his YouTube channel, which is is pretty good. There's some people, and at least Ben Kurt, you know, kind of stuck in the league because you have guys who didn't play in the league that have quarterback breakdown. Like, eh, let me watch quarterback school, right? JT O'Sullivan, and uh, you know, full disclosure, I've talked to JT. And I'm friendly enough with him. I can't say we're buddies, but it's like, yeah, I think JT is excellent at quarterback breakdowns. Watch QB school. Uh, Kurt Bankert, I might have talked to Bankert at like the Senior Bowl or something, I, but I do not really know him at all. I know some people that know him that have some high opinions on him, and his YouTube channel is interesting enough. I don't necessarily agree with it. If Mace was here, he would say that he doesn't like Kurt Bankert. I'm putting words in his mouth. If he disagrees with me, then tell me on Monday, Mace. But like, he doesn't like Bankert because of his social media presence because Bankert's a little um, gritchy on social networking. He's very opinionated, uh, but this is a guy that played in the league. He was a backup coming out of Virginia, but still a guy that stuck around in the league and, and has some varying opinions, but he sees things differently. His YouTube channel is, um, is interesting. So here's what Kurt Bankert had to say about Drake May. I'll bring it up on the screen here. What's happening with Drake May is eerily similar to what happened with Christian Hackenberg, in my opinion. Lots of hype, followed by a less-than-ideal season, 
and a lot of people holding on to the old hype. That's from Kurt Bankert, again, former NFL quarterback, great hair, and um, you know, decent enough YouTube channel. I'll say this: um, Christian Hackenberg couldn't play dead in a western, like that was incredibly apparent. Okay, so um, you know, it was there with Bill O'Brien at Penn State after the horrible things that happened at Penn State. I will not get into. Actually, I don't really like talking about the Nittany Lions uh, because of that. Sorry for Penn State alums out there. But it's like Hackenberg came with Bill O'Brien. They kind of try to set things back on course. Again, it's football compared to like real world stuff that was sickening what was happening at Penn State. Um, but Hackenberg couldn't play. Like anybody that said Hackenberg could play, they were way off base the entire time. Like it was incredibly obvious to quarterback evaluators that I trust that Christian Hackenberg could not play. I did not have a high grade on Hackenberg. And, you know, it's not a surprise to me that he was a bust or it didn't work out. And again, I learn more from my misses than I do my hits. So whether I say someone, I think they're good or I think they're not good, whenever they follow with what I think, I go, okay, that's what I saw, whatever. Hackenberg was never good. May is not the same as that. Um, I will say this, and I've said this on the fan. I'll say it today on Orange and Blue today. Uh, one of my main quarterback evaluators that I trust, the guy that pretty much discovered Pat Mahomes um, and had the highest opinion on Pat Mahomes, uh, he said, if you squint real hard with Drake May, you can see Derek Carr. It's not great, Bob. Okay. There are other evaluators. These are NFL scouts. Again, I don't. I don't spread what other media members tell me because media members, they may know a little something, but they don't know. And scouts love to talk. Media members love to gossip it. There's a difference. Agents love to just fill you full of BS so you can say something good about their client. NFL PR teams, they fill you with BS for their team, right? So little birdies are PR guys. I don't run with what PR guys tell me. Um, agents, sources, a lot of times sources are agents agents will tell you anything scouts really like to talk about the game they like to talk ball reporters like to gossip there's a difference so the scouts that i talk to that like to talk ball say the media is higher on drake may than many in the league are so i don't think drake may is falling per se you know drake may is falling how far can drake may fall a uh five you know three you know, like uh, Drake May's falling, but I don't think he'll fall past the top five. And let's say worst case scenario, the top 10. Again, could totally be wrong. But what I'm told is by my favorite quarterback evaluator is you got to squint real hard to see Derek Carr, which is not great. And also that other evaluators I talked to say that the media is much higher than the scouts are on Drake May. So what happens who is who is right in the situation? Like all these things are going to play themselves out as we get closer and closer to the draft. So in summation today, it's orange and blue today. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Uh, the Denver Broncos are doing their due diligence on all these quarterbacks. So I'm glad that they're putting Michael Penix and they're probably going to see if you remember stuff they told him at the combine. Because at the combine, remember Penix's answers were like, man, those guys are really tough. Like they, they showed me my bad plays. And so, you know, Sean Payton kind of put it to him, just like you put it to J.J. McCarthy. Let's see if they can break you. I must break you, you know, Yvonne Drago. That's what the Broncos are doing. So we'll see what happens with Penix. I do not think he's their plan A. I do not think he's their plan B. I don't think he's their plan C. But plans change. And if the plan changes enough that Michael Penix has to become your option, then the Denver Broncos have done their homework to feel comfortable selecting him wherever that may be. I don't think that's top 12. I don't even think it's in the top 20. But if you to move back into the 30s, maybe move back twice, right? The Broncos did that when they drafted Derek Wolf. Now they moved out of the first round, uh, but they moved back. I thought they were going to take Doug Martin and they moved back. And it's like, okay, maybe they're still going to take Doug Martin and they didn't. And I think that second first round pick they moved out of became Doug Martin top of my head. But anyway, um, you know, lots of things can happen. You have to be ready. You have to have your options at the ready. The Denver Broncos are doing that with this examination, closer examination of one Michael Penix Jr. I am Cecil Lammy. Follow me on Twitter at Cecil Lammy. 
Andrew Mason is on assignment today. So he's at Mace Denver. You got to check him out on socials as well. And then check out denversports.com. Uh, our growth in our YouTube channel, we're almost at 10,000 subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, as someone, I'll tell you behind the scenes, like I'm kind of tasked with running the YouTube channel in a way. Um, it's been a thrill to work on that side of things. And it's been a thrilling that you all have supported us so much. Um, but about 50% of you that watch don't subscribe. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're almost to 10,000 subscribers. And to make that leap from where, when I started in on this uh, around Thanksgiving till now, it's been incredible. The response has been huge. Watch Coffee Break, watch Denver Sports Daily. Like, please check us out and and like, comment, share, subscribe. Denver Sports Tonight, Will Peterson and company. Like, we love it. We love it. So help us out with those YouTube things. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you never miss a vid. I'm Cecil Lammy saying thanks, everybody. Happy Friday. Have a great weekend. Stay tuned. And would you please stay frosty?